She was our sovereign. <clears throat> we respected her. We a visibly her. emotional British High Commissioner at this meeting with journalists extols the qualities of late Queen Elizabeth II. And I thought I'd start actually by quoting President Buhari's statement on the untimely demise of Queen Elizabeth II. And he described her as a towering global personality and an outstanding world leader. And that for me was a very good encapsulation of an amazing woman, a woman who lived an, a life of dedicated duty and service. She was our sovereign, we respected her, we admired her. She was the best diplomat the United Kingdom had. She promoted global Britain in every part of the world. I was very honored to meet her myself on three occasions. And the thing that really struck me, because you're inevitably a little bit nervous meeting such a, an important and incredible person, was how good she is at putting everybody at their ease. And I, I've witnessed her do that in different settings. High Commissioner Lang recalls her last diplomatic assignment with the Queen and reiterates Britain's commitment to a sustainable relationship with Nigeria. When I did my credentials to her in my last diplomatic assignment, and indeed when I did them again for Nigeria, she mentioned her love of Africa, love of the Commonwealth, and, and she mentioned her two visits to Nigeria. In 1953, I think was the first, where she visited, she was here for 20 days visiting all over the country. And I've spoken to, the, to Prince Charles as he was then, and now King with your President Buhari, in January 2020 when your president visited him in Dumfries House in Scotland. I can absolutely assure you he follows Nigeria closely, indeed he reads my telegrams closely and I think he will continue to maintain that interest and affection for Nigeria. The Queen's death has been greeted with mixed reactions among Nigerians and other citizens across the globe, recalling the painful history associated with British colonialism. The British High Commissioner says for now, she would like to focus on the positive legacies of the late monarch. Probably well, not the time to focus particularly on that issue, but one positive thing I will say, I think, is that she took her responsibilities as we transitioned from empire to the Commonwealth very seriously. And I think she's invested huge amounts of leadership and positive energy in creating that Commonwealth family. We see the success of the Commonwealth because people are still trying to trying to join Gabon, for example, joined at the most recent heads of government meeting. Rwanda itself is not one of our former colonies, but is now hosting, hosting Chogum. So that's a club that's successful and growing from strength to strength. And that's down to her, her leadership, bringing that family of nations together across the Africa, the Caribbean and the Pacific, as well as, of course, Australia and Canada. It's a unique group grouping. And I think potentially a very, very powerful one. So that's the positive stamp and the legacy that she wanted to bring as we transition from empire to the Commonwealth. And I think it's been a great, great success. There are, there are obviously different views out there, and we will hear those views and we will engage with those views. But for now, I want to focus on the positive legacy that she left us. The Commission says in line with the United Kingdom's funeral order, it will remain in mourning until the Queen's funeral on September the 19th at Westminster Abbey. Meanwhile, the Queen's coffin will arrive in London on the 13th of September, where the Queen will lie in state for the public to pay their respects. Only Sunday, Arise News.